Thank you guys for tuning into another exciting video today. I've got some interesting topics for you to go over. We're going to first talk about a dozen or more people selling out and betraying Donald Trump. Joe's calling for more restrictive gun bans and one gun store pushes back. A Japanese man disrespects women and Kroger will incentivize his workers to comply. Will you? I'm Anthony and this is Allow Me to Retort. Thank you guys for tuning into another exciting episode. I'm glad you guys are along for the ride. Thank you for sticking in there. I know I've been uh, very spaced out with my videos lately. Very, very busy time, post-election stuff. Who would have thought? Um, but I'm glad you're here. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Like and subscribe if you're digging the videos because that's how I know. And you need to ring that bell as well because that's how you get notified. As you've probably noticed, I don't upload videos on a regular schedule. So you may miss some things and you want to get that bell on so you get notified as soon as I upload a video. But anyway, let's just get into the first story today. Uh, because President Trump said to, uh, this is a little bit old, this was going along with the impeachment stuff, uh, all you know by now, uh, over the past weekend, Trump was acquitted of all his uh, charges, and some of the other Republicans were, I think it was like six of them, uh, voted uh, to impeach Trump, and majority of them didn't. But the thing is, they were saying they voted to not impeach Trump under the grounds that they were trying to leave way for some other other prosecution stuff to happen, which is a load of crap. But the main thing here is they got over 12 people to testify and say that they did this because Donald Trump told them to. And to me, those people are the biggest sellouts and the biggest liars on the face of the earth. First of all, they're grown men and women that they have here testifying. They've admitted that what the actions they took, whether they were legal or illegal or whatever, instead of taking responsibility for their own actions, you've got these grown men and women saying, well, I did it because I believed what the president said and I just felt some sort of way and I had to act on it. But you need to take your responsibility for what you did. You can't just say, I believe Trump, so I did this. That is your action. That is your fault. And these people here testifying against Trump or testifying saying that they did this because of Trump and now they're apologizing and feeling sorry for their actions you know they're doing it only to save their own skin this over a dozen people their names need to be listed somewhere publicly so we can know who the real traitors to this country are these people are worse than the democrats they're worse than the worst liberal that exists out there people who would go off and break the law or do whatever and then to say i did it because x told me to it's the devil made me do it excuse and uh, these are grown men and women here who need to take responsibility for their own actions number one i don't necessarily think anything that happened on the six was so horrible uh, except for what the cops did by shooting that one innocent lady that was horrible but other than that I don't have too much of a problem with some of the actions that took place on the 6th. I think it was necessary. Uh, well, what I do have a problem is with us constantly apologizing and uh, tucking tail and hiding and cowering and saying, oh, we're sorry. We didn't mean to upset the balance. We didn't mean to threaten any politicians who aren't doing their job and serving the American people. We're so sorry. That's the wrong thing to take. I've said it several times. You can look at my videos. Um, I'm a huge proponent of what happened on the 6th, and I'm sorry, I don't think it's ever going to change. But these people who were there, they are traitors. They are the worst scum, I believe. They're doing what they have to do to save themselves. It's very selfish. And if they had things to lose, they should have thought about the things that they had to lose before they went. Um, they shouldn't be thinking about that after the fact and then trying to tuck tail and... Uh, uh, kowtow to what the Democrats want them to say and help them impeach our president. Obviously, that did not work. The president is still set free. Uh, he still got some more legal battles on the way because obviously the Democrats aren't going to let up. They're going to still try to come after this man. But these people added fuel to the fire. They helped stack the case against Trump and they are sellouts. One of these such traitors, his name was Garrett Miller, and he released a statement saying, while I never intended to harm Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez nor harm any members of the Capitol Police Force, I recognize that my social media posts were completely inappropriate. Uh, Miller is facing five charges for making threats. He said that he wanted to shoot Ocasio-Cortez on Twitter. Uh, he made also several other violent threats against them. And again, he is blaming Trump for his violence, despite the fact that in the very speech that Trump gave that day, he is on record as saying we need to peacefully protest he said that of course you'll never hear that the democrats won't allow you to hear that the media won't allow you to hear that 
he also said the words peacefully protest, but they're going to dig up idiots like this guy who are willing to say that I acted violent because I believe that Trump wanted me to act violent. Trump never said go act violent. Trump never said go destroy anything. Uh, but these people did that on themselves. And now you've got over a dozen of them turning around and blaming the president for their own actions. And I know we all hate the cancel culture and I'm not asking for big tech to come and cancel this guy, but we the people should definitely cancel this guy. You're a small business owner. You shouldn't serve him. You're an employer. You shouldn't hire him because he's scum. He's trash. Him and all the other dozen people who decided that they were going to portray Trump and uh, lie and try to throw him under the bus to save their own skin. Speaking of presidents, pretend president Joe Biden uh, is pulling on our heartstrings today. He's using the Parkland shooting, Parkland, Florida uh, high school shooting, to pass more gun reform. Uh, he wants to ban automatic guns, uh, ban, well, he all, automatic guns are already banned, but he wants to ban what they're labeling as assault rifles. Um, he also wants to ban the online sale of ammunition, which we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, three years ago, obviously, a horrible tragedy happened. A deranged uh, person went into Parkland, Florida High School school killing uh, I think a dozen or so or two dozen students uh, wounding several others it was a big horrible stain on this country which highlights our mental issues that we have in this country that nobody wants to tackle instead they want to blame it on the gun not the people holding the gun um, but that's a whole nother video we can talk about Joe Biden released this statement Three years ago today, a lone gunman took the lives of 14 students and three educators at Majority Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. In seconds, the lives of dozens of families and the life of American community were changed forever. This administration will not wait for the next mass shooting to heed that call. We will take action and end our epidemic of gun violence to make our schools and communities safer. The problem here is that... Uh, Banning these guns, banning these particular guns, is not going to make our schools any safer. Uh, what he's talking about is these assault-style rifles. People have been able to shoot up schools with shotguns and handguns. Uh, in in Japan, there was a couple of years ago where a man was able to take out 20 or 30 people on a subway with a knife. Um, people are going to do evil things if they want to do evil things. Uh, it's not the tools that they use to do those things. Uh, guns are, make no mistake, they are tools. Uh, they can be used for uh, safety. They can be used for leisure and fun and education. Uh, there's nothing wrong necessarily with having guns and owning guns and anything that seeks to take those away from the American people is very un-American. This country was founded on the principle of that we should be able to fight and defend ourselves. Uh, it's one of the very things that kept us safe uh, for so long from foreign invaders is that we, the American people, are our own army, our own militia, ready to go at any moment of you set foot on our ground uh, and for some reason you made it through our military and our National Guard. We at our own homes, we'll defend our own homes and our property from those foreign and domestic. Uh, so anything that seeks to strip those guns from the American people is extremely un-American. Uh, this is un-American. What we should be focusing on is making our schools safer by putting more safety equipment in our schools metal detectors built into doors, uh, something that doesn't make it feel like students are walking into a prison, but we have the technology here. Why aren't we utilizing it? Why I feel like these are very simple solutions is that, you know, a metal detector at a door or just a security guard at a door, especially in the case of some of these school shootings where it was like, oh, somebody walked in uh, in the middle of the day. They walked through past the front office. It was like school was already in session and they came in while the classes were happening. That kind of thing shouldn't even be possible. Those are the simple solutions that I think we should be looking at, not making it harder for law-abiding citizens to purchase guns, to defend themselves. Gun ownership in America is a huge part of why we don't have those horrible uh, communist uh, dictatorship regimes here in America is because we have the right, we have the ability to fight back in all sorts of different ways. Uh, Joe Biden putting these gun laws in place is a step back for America. Make no mistake about it. However, despite the fact that Joe Biden is picking us as a whole, take a step back. Uh, one ammo manufacturer is refusing to sell to anyone who did vote for Joe Biden. Phoenix Ammunition, a company out of Michigan, is family owned. Uh, on their website, you can buy ammunition online. They have enacted a checkbox that will ask you, did you vote for Trump or did you vote for Joe Biden or something like that? And if you check yes, it won't allow you to buy ammunition. Uh, now, obviously, the easy way around this is to lie, which don't get me wrong. I, I don't think a Joe Biden voter is above lying at all. Um, but 
right now they're making the stance and a lot of people are asking, you know, are you serious about this? And and the guy who owns the company comes out and he says, yeah, we've had a few potential customers call this morning and ask why they have to check a box stating that they did not vote for Joe Biden in order to purchase our ammunition. First question, are you serious? And then we respond, yes, we are serious. Joe ran a campaign built on the most radical gun control platform a major party candidate has ever had, including banning the sale of online ammunition, a plan to bankrupt our company. I'm sorry to be so punny, but they're sticking to their guns and they are asking you if you voted for Joe Biden that you need to go get your ammo somewhere else. Now, again, you can simply check the box saying, no, you did not vote for Joe Biden and you'll be able to continue to purchase your ammo. We know cancel culture is a thing that the liberals really love to indulge in. So these guys are really sticking their necks out by making these statements and uh, backing themselves up on it. So yeah, Phoenix Ammunition is saying that if you voted for Joe, Go get your ammo somewhere else. Uh, kudos to you guys. Keep putting up the good fight. Speaking of fights, here's one that you don't want to fight. Here's one you should definitely back down from and apologize the moment you said it. As a matter of fact, just don't say it. But here we have it. Tokyo Olympics chief says women uh, meetings with women take too long. Prime Minister Yoshio Mori made the remark. Wednesday in response to plans to double the proportion of women on the Japanese Board of Olympic Committee from 20% to 40. If you increase the number of women, you have to some extent limit the time for their remarks. Otherwise, you'll run into trouble because it will never end. Obviously, this upset a lot of people. Uh, Miori was called to resign. He refused to resign at first. He said he wasn't backing down. And when asked if he really felt that way, if he really thought women talked too much, he responded, I don't know. I don't listen to women that much lately. People were very upset and they were calling for him to resign. And so he eventually gave in and did it. Uh, but props to Mr. Maori for uh, even digging his heels in the first time after saying it. And my gosh, the uh, nads on that guy to double down. I mean, of course, he's in his 80s. There's not much left else for him to do anyway. Retire and just, you know, relax, man. Take a break off. And if anybody ever puts a microphone in front of your face again, just Shake your head and walk away, Mr. Miori, uh, because it ain't worth it, my friend. It's not worth it. Uh, but what a peek behind the curtain. 83-year-old Japanese man and how he feels about women in meetings. It doesn't get any more real in th than that, I'll tell you what. And in my last story, Kroger, uh, which is the largest grocery store chain in the United States, is offering $100 to each of its employees who get the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Kroger is humongous. If you don't know Kroger, if you don't have Kroger in your region, uh, take a look at this. Hold on, here it is. Take a look at this. Kroger, the Kroger company, owns all of these other companies here. So if you have a grocery store in your area that uses any of these logos or any of these names, just know that is Kroger. I mean, they are humongous. From here in Georgia to Washington State, Kroger is all over the place. Um, so with that being said, this is a huge move uh, and this could definitely cause some ripples and maybe have a bunch of other companies follow suit uh, because Kroger's just so massive. When they do something, it can trickle down. Uh, so Kroger is giving $100 to any of its employees that get the recommended doses of COVID-19 vaccine. And any of those who can't do it for medical or for health reasons or whatever, uh, Kroger is asking them to take a seminar on safety and how to social distance or whatever you have it. And uh, they can still get the $100. Um, to me, this is very sneaky. It's funny that Kroger can afford to give out this $100 bonus at this one time, especially when they're supposed to be suffering from all this stuff going on during the pandemic. Uh, but I myself has actually worked for Kroger before, and I know they're very stingy with the way they pay their employees. I know the type of employees they hire and they target. It's usually older people who uh, don't really have a choice but to work these jobs, and they don't really want to work. Or it's young teenagers who are getting their first 
first job and then they get so much turnaround that they never have to do good by anybody. They just keep flipping them over and over and over and they just have this wealth of young people to keep doing the same crappy jobs because none of them there are long enough to realize that they're doing such a crappy job or to d demand that something be done about it. Uh, but anyway, so Kroger's doing this. They're taking advantage of it and like I said, they've got older people who work there, uh, which is I think is a good market for them to be targeting with this vaccine and then they've got these younger people who work there who are, will do anything for money basically um, so Kroger's paying you to comply paying you to get in line uh, they claim it's all in the name of safety but as somebody who's worked for Kroger I don't really think they give a darn about the safety of their employees all they care about is their bottom line and in this case where they're giving away money there's definitely something fishy there especially because this comes I think it was a week uh, here it is this move comes days after Kroger said it was going to close a few stores in California due to local law ordinances requiring them to temporarily boost the pay of grocery workers per dollar. So the same company that is closing down its stores because it can't afford to pay employees a few dollars more because of the pandemic is able to now dish out hundreds of dollars across the country which is this is going to come to millions of dollars across the country that they can pay you for getting the vaccine but they for some reason could not pay their employees a few bucks more for working during the pandemic it is very interesting to see how this turns around so kroger on one hand they've got not enough money to pay people more during the pandemic but on the other hand, they've got so much money that they're giving it away to employees during the pandemic. Like I said, Kroger doesn't give a darn about its employees. It's all about their bottom line. And those stores probably weren't making enough money for them to care about them. So guess what? You guys are out of a job and you're also not going to get the opportunity to get this hundred dollar bonus. Uh, if you're in California and you're confused and you're like, what? We don't even have Kroger's over here. It's Ralph's and Kroger. Uh, Kroger in California, I believe, is Ralph's. So, yeah. Ralph's closing down in California because eh, we can't afford to pay you. Yet across the nation, they are giving money out to everyone else uh, because they can't afford it. And it's that important. But you guys weren't. Anyway, those are my stories, my opinions. You guys tell me what you think in the comments below. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I'm Anthony, and this is Allow Me to Retort.